Good to start, Hannah. Yes, sorry about that, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience. We're good to start. Good evening, everybody, and thanks for joining us. Just got back from the White House. My first visit to the White House since I was uh, a kid uh, getting a tour. And it was really a historic day to be there. Got bussed over from the Capitol Hill steps and the mood on the bus was really exuberant. Uh, we, this has been a tortuous path to this bill signing. Um, and the House and Senate members all felt a real, a real catharsis in being there and, and getting it done. Um, The president, I think, was his most powerful moment was towards the end of his speech when he said Xi Jinping of China has asked him in previous one on one meetings, how do you define the United States? What does America mean to you? Can you tell me what this country is about? And the president had said, yes, in one word, possibilities. And this bill is first and foremost, about expanding possibilities for working and middle-class Americans, as the president says, from the bottom up and the middle out. And second, it's about expanding the possibilities for the United States on the world stage in the 21st century. It's enabling us to compete in the increasingly competitive 21st century economy. We heard from Senate and House leaders, we heard from labor, union members, we heard from the vice president, uh, all in this theme of, this is a bill that makes long overdue investments in high-speed internet, in roads and bridges, in clean water, in transit and rail, in our ports, so that the average American is more productive, has a higher quality of life, and the United States as a comprehensive economy is more prosperous and fair. I think these are really, this is really gonna be the core takeaway from this bill, not the process to get us here, but the impact over the next decade or two. Uh, the speaker pointed out that the United States actually has a, a history of making bold investments in times of crisis. Actually, excuse me, that was the vice president who said this. The, the United States has a history of making bold investments in times of crisis. Um, from launching the Transcontinental Railroad during the Civil War to uh, the Eisenhower interstate system during the Cold War to now, as we emerge from the pandemic, uh, the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act, which will turbocharge the recovery. For Massachusetts, this is going to double down on the American Rescue Plan funds, which we've already seen the State House start to allocate towards healthcare and housing and workforce development. This is now another boost for uh, the MBTA and regional transit authorities for fixing our roads and bridges, for expanding high-speed internet, for improving uh, Logan Airport and other ports throughout the Commonwealth, uh, for uh, undergirding more affordable housing. This bill is gonna redound to the benefit of Massachusetts for years to come. Uh, and I know that uh, I, was, I was on the bus ride back with, uh, with Congressman Malton and Congressman Lynch, and there's a lot of excitement about what this means for the Bay State. Thanks so much, Congressman. And we'll take questions now this time. So if you'd like to raise your hand, um, I'll let you ask those questions. Perfect. And Lisa from Politico is going to ask a question. Hey, Congressman. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, Lisa. Just wanted to get a little more in depth. Uh, I know you can't list it all, but just what some of the highlights are um, in funding for Massachusetts in this bill, if there are any specific dollar amounts that you can give or things that really stuck out to you in the funding that the state's going to receive. There's a few. And uh, Massachusetts overall should get between nine to ten billion dollars. We should the, the initial pass through of the formula funding for the state is that roads and bridges could get up to four billion dollars, uh, a billion for uh, excuse me, four billion for roads, a billion for bridges, two and a half billion up to for transit, 
a billion for clean water infrastructure, tens of millions for high-speed internet, uh, a significant sum of money for weatherization of homes, which will reduce energy costs for consumers and help us uh, become more climate resilient. So what Massachusetts is gonna see is, as a state with, with aging infrastructure, uh, given our winters and, and given the fact that we put our water pipes in uh, really ahead of the whole, a lot of the rest of the country, but almost a century ago, we're gonna benefit enormously from this. We've got a lot of transit lines. We've got a lot of subsurface water infrastructure. We've got a lot of roads and bridges that have been <laughs> torn apart by winter after winter. And this state is really gonna get a boost. And it's very complementary with the American Rescue Plan funding that the state house is allocating now. We're seeing this, this kind of, this one-two punch of housing and workforce development coming from the state house with the transportation infrastructure and the water infrastructure that supports that housing and workforce development. Uh, and that is that the two of them are very synergistic together. So that personally is what I'm most excited about. Awesome. And if there are more questions, please feel free to raise your hand. Perfect. And hey, Nick. Um, hey, thanks for doing this. Um, my question is just, uh, I know this bill obviously funds um, or provides funding over the course of five years. And do you have any, what would you say is the first thing that people in Massachusetts, like what are the first impacts that you think people will notice from this bill, whether it's roads or bridges or um, other infrastructure? I, was, I'm, I don't know if that, if that sentence makes sense or if that question makes sense, but like, what do you think the most like, or the most immediate um, noticeable impacts will be? It does. I think that's gonna be really context dependent, really community dependent. I'll, I'll give you a couple of examples though. So I was just in Easton this last week for a meet and greet where we, uh, we did outdoor office hours and, and had a great turnout and spoke with constituents there. Easton, very concerned about water infrastructure. They've got uh, elevated levels of PFAS. Their town management has done a terrific job on being transparent and proactive. But that's an expensive problem. That's more expensive than one town can really solve on their own. I think the residents of Easton are gonna feel the clean water infrastructure first and foremost. Uh, this morning, I was at, virtually, I was in Franklin with a number of state and local election officials, obviously a lot of them from Franklin. And there, it could be that they feel improvements to the commuter line. Uh, the Franklin line has been the least reliable of any of the commuter rail lines in Massachusetts. This money can help improve reliability uh, and service intervals for the commuter rail station to Franklin. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Fall River for the mayor's announcement of how he's gonna use the American Rescue Plan funds. He was allocating those towards community development, towards uh, some public safety, and for uh, the combined sewer overflow for water infrastructure. So they're feeling right now the American Rescue Plan funds in the, in the, term, in, in the form of improved public safety and community development and taking down their water bills. So I think it's gonna be really differently contextual and that's healthy, that, that's the way it should be. By design, this bill has a lot of deference to state and local officials. I think as a former city councilor myself and uh, someone who tries to appreciate the breadth and diversity of this country, you really want to empower local officials to prioritize the public works projects because they have the, the best and most direct feedback from their constituents. Thanks, and please raise your hand if you'd like to ask the next question. Hey, Lisa. Hi, I'll do a fun one if we're waiting for other people. Um, so how many people from Massachusetts, how many politicians did you spot there? Because I am collecting selfies and trying to find everyone. So I definitely saw Claire Cronin there. I saw Seth Moulton and Steve Lynch and Bill Keating there. Uh, Senator Warren and I took a selfie together. I don't think I, I saw Jim McGovern there. Uh, I'm pretty sure President Spoka was supposed to be there. I didn't catch her, but I could have just not seen her. Um, it was cold. That's one thing to note. People were, people were, I'm from New England, so I didn't have a jacket and I was feeling good regardless. But some of our, our colleagues from Southeastern and Southwestern states were a little bit more shivery. Uh, so people might've ran back to the bus right after it was done. 
Yeah, it looked pretty windy on TV. Um, the Senate president ended up not feeling well, so she didn't travel down. So you didn't miss her. Got it. Cool. Thank you, though. <laughs> Any additional questions? Well, I think that's everyone then. If um, there are no more questions, thank you all so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. This is an historic day for the country and I appreciate your all's time and, and your coverage of it. Thanks all.